Today we're going to talk about RPE and RIR, what they are and how you can use them in your programs. RPE stands for Rate of Perceived Exertion, which basically stands for how hard do you think that you're working. So it is a subjective measure of how hard that you're working. This scale runs from 1 all the way up to 10, 10 being the top limit. So if you're doing an RPE 10 in a set, it means you had max effort, zero reps left in the tank. On our RPE resource, um, I have a couple of different things cited from Michael Tushir, who owns Reactive Training Systems, and I think he describes it best where he has a 10 RPE described as zero reps in the tank, a 9 RPE having two, one rep in the tank, an 8 RPE having two left in the tank, and there are even 0.5s in between. So if you weren't sure if you had two left in the tank, it could be an 8.5 RPE. Another chart I'm attaching here is from Izzy Navarez, who owns Powerlifting to Win. And this relates your bar speed to how difficult the set is. So I think it's another cool way to gauge uh, how difficult your set is. A six or below on this scale means the bar does not slow down at all. Um, a seven on the scale means that the bar is slowing down a little bit. Um, an eight RPE is a very noticeable slowing of the bar speed. A nine is a grinding rep. And a 10 means that it basically comes to a complete stop. It's max effort. There was nothing left in the tank. And lastly, you do have RIR, which stands for reps in reserve. And very simply put, it just is a measure of how many reps you had left in reserve. So if you had one in the tank, you would be in one RIR. Two in the tank, you had two RIR. Very simply put, it's, that it's very straightforward. Um, I do encourage clients to use whichever makes the most sense to you. So if you're good at gauging uh, how much is left in the tank with any of those different methods, use the one that um, works best for you and that you best understand. This type of system is super useful because it allows you to perform based on how you're feeling. For example, if you feel at, like absolute trash, you're allowed to decrease your weight on that given day um, or decrease your reps, whatever the protocol is, um, in accordance with how you're feeling. And on the flip side of things, if you feel really great, you're allowed to kind of push it, maybe add more weight or add more reps to that day. RPE is totally a system that you have to get used to, so you're probably not gonna be super great at it when you start. Um, so here's a couple of different ways that you could test and get better at gauging your RPE. On any given lift, you can do your complete warm up and work your way to a set of five at an RPE eight. What this means is that you should be able to do a maximum reps of seven on that set. After you've done that, now you can hit an AMRAP, meaning you're gonna do as many reps as possible. So if you need a spotter, make sure you have one with you or set your safety bars on the squat rack or the bench press. So if you truly hit five reps at an eight RPE, the most you should be able to do is an eight. And so you're gonna find out really quickly, are you good at using this system or do you need to learn how to better utilize this system? So on the subsequent set, if you end up doing 12 reps and the most you should have had in the tank was seven, that's gonna tell you that you're kind of underestimating what you're capable of. It means you got more in the tank. On the other side of things, you have people who really like to go pedal to the metal every single day they're in the gym. So if you tell them to do an RPE eight, they're constantly doing an RPE 10 or a nine. They're basically going to almost failure on every single set, which isn't ideal if you're looking to use progressive overload throughout the long term. Now you know what RPE is and all the different ways that you can gauge it and also how you can test it. This is how you could use it in a program. And this is gonna be super straightforward. It's not necessarily how I use it in all my programs, but if you're looking to progressively overload or make things more intense over time, in a four week training program, week one could be an RPE six, meaning it's not overly difficult on your sets. Week two could be a seven, week three could be an eight, and week four could be a nine to a 10. Um, so over time, you're finding that you're pushing harder and harder throughout the weeks, and then you could run that cycle again through different rep ranges with different exercises, um, that's just kind of a grossly oversimplified version of how you could use, utilize it within your program. That's what RPE is. Go ahead and subscribe to the page and we'll see you at the next video. Bless up.